Hi there, I'm Alex from the Southern Ukulele Store and we're back this week fresh faced and bushy tailed to look at 10 underrated tenor ukuleles that we currently sell here at the Southern Ukulele Store. So I've chosen these 10 ukuleles because they are ukuleles that have a related or sister model or comparative model that has received more attention and thus is more popular. But there's nothing wrong with any of the 10 ukuleles we're going to feature today. In fact, I feel a bit guilty that I haven't featured some of them more prominently earlier. Um, there's other reasons as well. Some of these are harder to come by than the more established models, or they are made in smaller numbers, or they are new. Um, yeah, 10 ukuleles we're going to look at today. Uh, I'm really excited to get underway. Uh, we're going to start with a snail ukulele that we all know and love, which is the UKT518. Okay, and the first ukulele we're going to look at today is the UKT518 by Snail. This is a laminate mahogany tenor. It's priced uh, under £150, so it's right in that beginner's price category for somebody that wants an instrument that they're not going to outgrow immediately. Uh, laminate mahogany top, back and sides with some really nice tortoiseshell binding, a tortoiseshell uh, rosette, an ebony fingerboard and bridge with a 35mm nut, and Snail use these really nice closed back tuners and with a bone nut and saddle on the snails. They come with a gig bag as well, so they really are the complete package for somebody looking for their first ukulele that wants to spend more than the bare minimum but doesn't want to kind of go mad. Uh, I like the 518 and the reason it's underrated is because there is a model known as the SUCM1 that we featured extremely heavily in the past and made it kind of our favourite ukulele of the year a couple of years back and the 518 as a result gets less attention but if you want a more traditional looking instrument something that looks a bit more vintage the 518 is the one to go for and you could save a few pounds so let's give this one a play and see what you think Okay, and the second ukulele we're going to look at today really is criminally underrepresented. You don't see too many reviews online for this, but this ukulele has won awards and it is the Flight Layer Tenor Ukulele. Now, there is going to be some debate, I hope, in the comments section about whether you pronounce it Leah or Layer. Now, I'm just going to put my cards on the table and say that I went to school with a girl called Leah that spelt her name this way, but I am also one of the every human on the planet that's ever seen Star Wars. So I'm going to call it the Leia, and if I'm wrong, I'm happy to be wrong. Correct me all day long, but let's just go with Leia and run with it and hope it catches on if I'm wrong. This is the Flight Leia. It's a slimline tenor, so it's half the thickness of a normal tenor ukulele with a slight curve in the back to help with projection and volume. It has a solid cedar top with laminate acacia back and sides. The fingerboard and bridge are quite interesting. They are purple wood, which is um, in texture feels a bit like ebony. I may be wrong, but it feels like it's too smooth to be real. So it's possibly a manufactured wood, um, but purple wood is uh, it's a rare wood to be used as fingerboard material and flight do use it on some other models uh, and they feel great. So uh, let's not overthink it. It's a great word here. You have a 35mm nut with a bone nut and saddle and these really cool open back tuners. Of course this ukulele also has a pickup which uh, you would plug into the end, the end pin socket there and you have some controls that you would reach inside the sound hole just slightly res recessed. It's a double pickup, double are a fantastic on the rise. Uh, pickup brand that I, I imagine in five ten years time they'll be as big as Fishman and I see them featured in more and more guitars and ukuleles uh, as things are coming through at the affordable end 
Uh, I've had a double pickup in one of my own instruments, and uh, from, if you're plugging it into a decent amp, it's going to be as good as anything you could buy at twice the price. Uh, and I really mean that. I stand by that. Uh, this ukulele also comes with a decent flight gig back, so very much a complete package again, and not too expensive. This ukulele, around the £200 price point, will fit into most people's budgets if they're an intermediate player or a beginner looking to kind of spend big on the first one. You get maple binding on the front and back, which tie the front and back really nicely together. Yeah, the layer model is great. Let's give the layer TE a play. Now here's a ukulele I'm surprised I haven't featured before. This is the Baton Rouge UR71T. The UR71T was a new model launched at the NAMM show this year. One of quite a few different models that Baton Rouge launched and something that really does feel quite unique at the price. Once again, this is a ukulele around that £200 price point where there's so much choice. So many established names have models. Carlo, Hana, Lanakai. I mean, the list goes on forever and ever. Um, but Baton Rouge have always remained more at the affordable end and just a few models have breached towards the £200 price and they've, they've always been very good alternatives. This is no different. This has a solid redwood top with laminate spalted maple back inside. So a really nice kind of red orangey hued top with a lighter yellowy back and sides and they all look very very different from one to the next. This has a walnut fingerboard and bridge of a 35mm nut, but the neck on a Baton Rouge is nice and chunky. It's got, it's got some vibe to it, you know, the ukulele looks different, it sounds a bit different, a bit, a bit warmer than most uh, of the alternatives. And compared to the layer that we've just tried, which had the thinnest uh, depth of any of the instruments we're going to look at today, this one has the thickest, it's a really thick tenon. In fact, I'm going to grab the layer and just show you the difference in thickness between these two instruments. So the flight feels positively like a station wagon compared to a mini on the layer. Completely different things. They come with a coil of strings out of the box, but I've had a few customers ask me to restring these with various things recently, and these sound really dynamic and different and you can really expand on the sound more with a string change so don't hesitate to ask us about that if you're interested in one. In the meantime though we're going to play this one bare bones with the aquilas on. This is the UR71T. Okay, time for something with a slightly different spec now. This is a Islander MAT4. This is a laminate maple tenor. It has another deep body similar to the Baton Rouge, just slightly more slender, with a walnut fingerboard and bridge, although this is changing um, from time to time, I'm noticing with Islander. At the moment, this model has a walnut fingerboard and bridge, but they're using different variants of walnut, so you might class this as oven coal, or there's plenty of different options it could be. This one also has those open back tuners. And despite being a laminate, this instrument has a lot of depth, a lot of volume. It's a, it's a good, 
it's a good very transparent sounding instrument so you know it, it's not an instrument that's going to hide your mistakes but if you are in a group and you want to be able to hear yourself over the person next to you but you want something that has a bit of subtlety to it it's a it's a great uke it kind of does a bit of everything the uh the islanders are unique in that they have a pin bridge so you've got the four kind of layer pin bridges and a 38 mil nut so if you've got big hands and you want slightly wider string spacing this is a good option for you the mat4 it's been around in a few different guises over the year you've, it's been known as the mapg4t and uh, islander kind of layer they've been playing around with maple for a long time and i think with this satin mat4 model they've really they've kind of they they've hit gold so let's give this one a play and see what you think Okay, and the next ukulele we're going to look at today is the Snail S10T, which is uh, another ukulele that is uh, just criminally overlooked. It's a very new model, which probably accounts for some of the reason that people haven't heard of it or they've not had a chance to play one. But this ukulele is an alternative to the very popular SUT M3, which is the modern looking mahogany solid instrument with very plain decoration. This is a solid mahogany gloss tenor as well. Uh, under £300 with that really cool rope binding, very unique for the price. Snail as always you have the ebony fingerboard and bridge and this model has the slotted headstock which a lot of people ask for for ukuleles by Snail but is not available on that SUT M3 model. I think in a year's time it would be unfair to call this instrument uh, underrated or kind of underappreciated. I think it just needs time to be seen and played by people and when they do they're going to really fall in love with it. The S10T is a uh, brand new model from Snail and I'm really excited to feature it now so let's give it a play and see what you think. Okay, and the next ukulele we're going to look at today is a Breedlove Luau tenor. Now, the Breedlove Luau ukuleles are quite interesting in that they launched the concerts first. So the concert ukuleles came out in 2019. They did a few different flavours and finishes and they were, they were very popular, but just slightly overlooked in a crowded market because Carla makes so many models that have pickups and so many models that have quirky looking tops, uh, Ohana 2, Flight, just a crowded marketplace for a ukulele to be launched. Now the tenor seemed to me like the more obvious option because Breedlove are a guitar maker, although Kim Breedlove, the original owner of the company, the, the original Master Luthier, had uh, quite an affection for the ukulele and used to make quite nice custom high-end builds that I've never actually seen one in the flesh but you can see pictures of them uh, wherever you google them online and uh, yeah they just look fantastic and these instruments are inspired by some of those builds so the Luau Tenor has a shaded myrtle top so it's a solid top that's had a slight brown burst just applied around it to give it a kind of darker smoky look but if you want to see what it looks like unshaded you just turn it around so just a slightly yellower plainer looking wood and Breedlove are quite clever they're an Oregon based company and they like to use local woods 
that's actually what their guitar business is really built on as well so although this instrument is made in China they're using their stock of, of Myrtle and yeah the ukulele has a completely different sound to other ukuleles at the same price as you're going to hear in a moment you have uh, an ebony fingerboard and bridge with 35 mil nut it's quite a flat point on the back of the neck it's a it's a thinner neck with a flat point on the back so very comfortable to somebody with smaller hands that wants a tenor this could be a really good option for you breed love used some really robust almost guitar like open back tuners and the neck is satin finish but the body and the instrument itself is gloss so they put some real thought into what people are after uh, and I think that with time breed love will re-establish themselves as being a ukulele brand uh, worth a look and this particular one has a pickup too so double bubble there Anyway, I'm going to give this one a play and see what you guys think. Okay, and the next ukulele we're going to look at today is the new Snail S20T, which is a ukulele that's underrated and overlooked because everybody loves the S60T. The S60T is essentially the same ukulele as this, but with a very, very fancy and elaborate abalone rosette. So this ukulele has all the same features. It's solid flamed acacia, and they all look really individual and really, really sexy. They've got an ebony fingerboard and bridge with paduke binding going up the neck and around the front and back. You also have an armrest as well, so a comfortable, comfortable, a comfortable, really cool, quirky looking ukulele. This one has a different rosette, just a more understated, uh, I don't know, no, don't really know what you call that. I think it's some kind of burnt sun rosette with, uh, with those arrows. It, it looks like a sunset and a sun rising at the same time. Pretty cool. Ebony and maple kind of crosses going through yeah the s20t definitely overlooked but sound wise undeniable one of my favorite sounding ukuleles we're going to play today let's give it a play It can be quite hard to follow ukuleles like the Snail S20T, but I had something up my sleeve that I want to show you next, which is the Anui Nui AMM3. Now the AMM3 is an all solid mahogany tenor ukulele with a gloss finish, gloss mahogany neck, a slotted headstock, a traditional style slotted headstock, so quite a thick slotted headstock with very, very reliable Anui Nui open back tuners that look just slightly more deluxe than your standard Grovers that you would get. This ukulele comes in a really nice pod case, it has a rosewood fingerboard and bridge, and just some subtle features like the black binding, which the whole thing has got a just a unique look, and it's traditional and yet extremely modern looking. And the abalone rosette as well is a really nice understated feature. It's not too over the top. Uh, we played the AMM2 AMM recently in a video, which is the concert version, and the comments section really did favour that model. So I'd be really interested to see what you folks think of the AMM3. Let's give it a play.
Okay, the penultimate ukulele we're going to look at today is an Ana Ule AT. Ana Ule ukuleles are made in Hawaii, one of the lesser known Hawaiian brands. It's a factory made instrument, but I believe made but just by one person, Mr. Gareth Yaki, who builds these instruments uh, in Pearl City, Hawaii, which just sounds like the best place to ever go ever. Pearl City, Hawaii. It sounds just like the kind of place you want your ukulele to be made. But these are much more affordable than the other Hawaiian brands that we stock, the Kanaleas, Koaloas, Kamakas. The ukulele, the ukulele world is big enough to have so many smaller factories and smaller building projects going on, and Anaule are one of those said factories. We've been stocking Anaule for about eight months now. This is our second big batch delivery, and and the models do vary quite drastically so you could go for something like this which is a very plain looking AT model which is a koa tenor um, with a mahogany neck or you could go for something really really plush and deluxe um, one of the models we've we've had recently looked like a, a Kamaka HF2D2I which is a model that you would pay upwards of £3,000 for in the UK but the Anaule equivalent which was made much in the spirit of early Kamakas in kind of an old-fashioned way uh, you know will set you back about half of that so Anaule have a lot of potential to really satisfy players out there that don't have the budget necessarily for a Kamaka but want that kind of vintage I want to say rough and ready but that's not fair to these instruments a kind of waxy old-fashioned finish this feels like an, an instrument that was made by a craftsman at home. Uh, it has a few finish flaws that you wouldn't get on a £3,000 Kamaka, but it has all the mojo that you would want. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that Ana Ule ukuleles, visually and cosmetically, aesthetically, they're kind of like a 7 out of 10, but the sound-wise, the feel, and the, just what it gives you is a 10 out of 10 which is kind of really what we're all looking for. Yeah, on this particular model and the Mango equivalent, you have open back Grover tuners. And the Ana Ule's, we supply them in a case. They don't arrive uh, to us that way, but we supply them in a case. Just a fantastic ukulele for about half the price of many of the other Hawaiian models out there. Let's give the AT a play and see what you think. Moving on now to the final ukulele of the day. This is the Ramiro Creations Mahogany Replica Tenor. Sounds like a mouthful, but the Replica Series is one of the high-end Ramiro Creations series. They make it in Mango, Koa, and Mahogany. And we featured the Mango and Koa models heavily on our YouTube channel and on our website. And the Mango versus Koa video we made has proven to be very popular. But the Mahogany ukulele has become overlooked, certainly here at SUS, as a result. I think at the high end, more people are looking for koa than anything else. You get some other some other wood combinations that are super popular. Modern combinations like mango or acacia or spruce with a exotic back and sides, and mahogany, which is very much the mainland U.S. wood that you associate with the early Martin ukuleles and Gibsons. That wood combination doesn't really get used as much on Hawaiian made models. Now, I'm not saying that the replica is made in Hawaii, it's not, it's made in Vietnam. But the styling of these instruments is very Hawaiian in, if you look at it, it's got that Hawaiian vibe to it. It's nice and chunky, that body shape that people know and love from the famous brands like Kanalea, Koaloa, Kamaka. Uh, it has a 38 mil neck uh, nut with a very thin neck. It's got the vintage style 
planetary tuners. It's a vintage style instrument and mahogany is a fantastic choice for somebody wanting a vintage style instrument. It's a bit warmer, it's honky, it's boisterous, it's got some soul to it. When I think of mahogany and I think of words to describe it, soul always comes up first. If you listen to folk players going back nearly a hundred years, mahogany's always had that kind of spiky, it's smooth but there's some there's some depth and character to it. It's a fine wine. And the replica mahogany is definitely a ukulele that you should look at in addition to the koa and mango equivalents. So I'm gonna give the replica a play. This one is low G. This is how uh, Pepe Romero wants them to be and uh, that's how they arrive with us. So who am I to argue? The Pepe Romero, Romero Creations replica mahogany tenor. Let's give it a play. Okay, so we've looked at 10 tenor ukuleles that are overlooked, underappreciated, but not anymore. Thanks to you folks watching this video. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, let's talk about it. Let's talk about what your favorites were, which ones you didn't like, let's talk to each other. Let's create a community spirit within the Southern Ukulele Store YouTube experience. Uh, remember as well, you can sign up to my own channel, which is Ukes with Alex, where I look at uh, string comparisons, tutorials. Um, I've just started the podcast. My most recent guest is Pete Howlett. Uh, you can find that now uh, in the description if you want to have a look at that. Um, in the meantime, though, folks, thanks for watching as always. Thanks for your support. And if you need a new ukulele, you can contact me at alex at ukulele.co.uk or call any of the team in store on 01202 I'm not really sure what I'm going to be featuring next week, but I'm, I've got two really exciting deliveries uh, on the horizon that hadn't arrived in time to make a video this week, so fingers crossed for next week. Have a great week. I'll see you again.